Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I'm going to explain how to create the eyes and nose of this baby. This is the first installment of my new portrait tutorial series. In this video, I will cover everything needed to create the artwork. This includes transferring the photo to the wood and signing off on your artwork at the end. So let's get started. Print your image on standard copier paper. In fact, while you're at it, print two, because we'll use the second one later. Coat the back of the image with graphite. I recommend using an HB or darker pencil. Anything that's in the plain H's, I think would be too light to easily see your pencil marks. The brand of pencil doesn't matter. I'm using a 2B that I didn't like for drawing. Secure the image with two pieces of tape, graphite side down to the board. If you are burning on paper, use a very low tack tape like paper tape. Use a pen or pencil to trace over the image. I recommend using a combination of solid and dashed lines for this. Use solid lines around shapes that have clearly defined edges, like the iris, eyelashes, around the eye next to the eyelids, etc. Use dashed lines for the shadows and highlights. The dashed lines are where transitions occur, so they indicate the start or outer edge of a shadow or highlight. Let's talk about that in a little more detail. On the inset photo, the number one is marking the lightest area on the cheek. Number two is the area where the shadows begin. Number three indicates the area just before the laugh line. It gets a little bit darker. Number four is the laugh line and it is the darkest area or the darkest shadow on the cheek. When you burn in the cheek, you know each area or segment needs to get darker in color. I will be burning on paper for this tutorial. I am using 140 pound, hot pressed, 100% cotton watercolor paper by Beohong. I doubt I pronounced the brand correctly, so my apologies for that. I put a link to the paper in the description below. If you are burning on paper, make sure to use a backer board of some type to protect the surface under the paper from charring. The heat of the pen tip will transfer through the paper. It's not that thick. I'm using a scratch board by Ampersand but anything will work like plywood or thick cardboard. I will put a link in the description to the board that I am using. Use a writer pen tip and burn in the solid lines to a medium tan color. While I do that, let's talk about setting up a good workspace. First off, keep your reference photo very close to where you are working. Also, keep a piece of scrap material nearby to test out your pen tip before you start burning. The scrap material should be of the same type of material that you are burning on. So if you're burning on paper, have a piece of scrap paper, wood, have wood. If you are right-handed, it would work better if your reference photo is on the left so you can easily see it at all times and then place your scrap material on the right. Switch to a shader pen tip and start burning along the edges of the dashed lines. Use the flat of the shader as you work. This will help prevent any crisp or hard edges from forming on the shadows. Use the razor edge of the shader when burning in the eyelashes. Always start the stroke at the base of the eyelash. This would be where the eyelash connects to the eyelid. 
Then pull the pin tip outward towards the end of the eyelash. Eyelashes are thicker at the base and taper to a narrow point at the end. Burn strokes start out thicker than they end, so that's why we start the stroke at the base of each eyelash. Now resume burning in the shadows. Our current goal is to burn around the dashed lines that are immediately around the eye so that we can erase the pencil marks. We are not trying to get the shadows and the eye area to its proper color. Instead, we want just enough burn marks on the paper or wood so that the pencil lines are no longer needed. I am using uniform strokes as my burn method. My burner is set just high enough to get a light to medium tan burn result. So I'm having to re-burn over the same mark several times before I can easily see it. Once you have an area that you don't need the pencil lines anymore, then use a pencil eraser and remove them. I am using a Tombow eraser, but any pencil eraser will work. I did put a link to the eraser in the description below. A reminder that you should only use the tip and or razor edge of the shader when drawing lines or working along the edges of clearly defined shapes like the iris. The rest of the time use the flat of the shader. Again, the reason is that you want soft edges along the dashed lines. The dashed lines represent transitions where the color changes, getting either darker or lighter in value. If you look at the shadows on the reference photo, you'll see that the shadows are not shapes with clearly defined edges like the iris is. Instead, the shadows are part of a large network of gradient shading. Before we get serious about the gradient shading, the pencil lines need to be gone. The reason is that the pencil marks are lines that will interfere with the shading. So we are currently working on burning along the dashed lines so that we can remove them. Make sure your pen tip is in optimal position when working along the edges of the iris. As you work on the skin around the eye, you can apply a base layer of light to medium tan on the skin. Just make sure that the base layer of color remains light enough so you don't lose your transition lines. At this point, I'm starting to use some circular motion as I burn. I also used pull away strokes along the upper edge of the iris, but the majority of the time I'm still using uniform strokes. Keep in mind that I only tell you this because it's a question I get asked frequently. Do not feel that you have to use the same burn strokes that I do. Use what works best for you. And if you are not familiar with my terminology, I do have a video that explains them, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. There is something very important I need to tell you. Every time you stop burning and you're consulting with the reference photo, which should be often, make sure to blot your pen tip on the scrap material before you resume burning. When the pen tip is not in contact with the wood or paper, the heat starts to build up. This excess heat can cause a dark blotch or spot to appear on the paper when the pen tip first touches it. So touch the pen tip to scrap material first and that will remove the excess heat and prevent dark blotches from happening on your artwork. Now that the pencil lines have been erased, let's burn in areas and create gradient shading between the areas. Let's first start with the iris. The iris is darker along the edges and has a bit of a dark ring around it. There are lines or spokes of color 
that radiate outward from the pupil, and the top of the iris is a bit shadowed. I recommend using a small shader or writer pen tip for the iris. There are a lot of reflection spots to avoid, and it would be easier using a smaller pen tip. Burn in the dark ring around the edge of the iris. I am using a combination of pull away and uniform strokes for this. With the pull away strokes, always start the stroke on the outer edge of the iris and pull it towards the pupil or the center. Work carefully around the many reflection spots on the eye. You do not want to burn them in at this time. Rotate the board so your pen tip is in optimal position when working along the bottom edge of the iris. Well, now it appears as the top. It is very important to rotate your reference material too. Make sure to burn along all of the top edges of the reflections while the pen tip is in optimal position. Right now on the screen, the top edge of the reflections appears as the bottom edge. Do not try to make the pull away strokes uniform in color, as variation will add to the texture of the eye and it will give it a more realistic look. Also, vary the width of the pull away strokes. Now let's reburn over the eyelashes. Look at the reference photo and you can see that the lashes on the middle or topmost part of the eyelid are almost vertical in direction. As you move towards the left side, the curve of the eyelash becomes visible. Some of the eyelashes droop down, blocking part of the white of the eye. As you burn in the lashes, follow those lines. Don't try to burn in what you think eyelashes should look like. Instead, burn along the lines you traced onto the paper or wood. With the skin, make sure you apply a base layer of color to the skin in areas that haven't been burned in yet. As you work, reburn over and around transition lines to create gradient shading. For a lot of the reburning, I used a combination of circular motion and uniform strokes. Looking back at the artwork, I would say I got smoother results using uniform strokes. I really prefer using circular motion for transitions, but I did notice that if I worked in an area for too long, it started looking blotchy instead of smooth. I'm not sure why. I attribute part of that to myself as I am on my learning curve with paper. Every item like paper, wood, leather, gourds, etc., all have their own attributes or differences. Some of those differences might require different burning techniques, so it can take a bit of experimenting before you find what works best for that item. With paper, I'm in that experimenting stage as I try to discover what works best to get the burn results that I want. As you work, Consult with the reference photo often. Lift your pen tip up and away from the paper when you are not actively burning. Before you resume burning, blot the pen tip to the scrap material to remove any excess heat that built up during the pause. When finishing the iris, use a variety of burn widths as you burn lines that angle from the outer edge of the iris towards the pupil in the center. Also, burn the lines in different hues of tan and light brown. Don't get too extreme with the color range, as we are building realistic but subtle texture on the eye. One more thing to do is to burn over most of the reflections. Check with the reference photo, as only a couple are white in color, the others are darker. With the eye done, let's finish up the skin. As you are giving the skin color, make sure to reburn over any shadows if they are not dark enough. Some of the shadows can seem really dark when comparing them next to the unburned paper. 
but they lose their intensity once the paper has been burned over. Consult with the reference photo often and compare it against your artwork. Concentrate on small areas, like the skin between the eyebrow and the first crease on the eyelid. Look for the lightest spot in that small area. Make sure your artwork has a similar light area in the same spot. Then look for the darkest spot, and again, make sure your artwork matches. If it doesn't, reburn over it until it does. Doing portrait work is really about burning in the shadows to give the face form. Now let's work on the right eye. Our first goal is the same as it was with the left eye, and that is to get rid of the pencil marks as soon as they are no longer needed. So use the flat of the shader and burn along the transition lines that are represented by dashed lines. While you are working, you can give the skin a base layer of color, or you can wait until the pencil lines are gone and then do it. Either way, don't worry too much about gradient shading until the pencil marks are gone. If you give the skin a base layer of color, just burn in the area that is between the dashed lines. If it helps, think of the dashed lines as forming edges of a shape. Burn in the shape with uniform color, but make sure you can identify where the edges of each shape are because once the pencil lines are gone, we will be reburning over the areas to produce gradient shading. What you do not want to do is burn all of the skin around the eye to a smooth, uniform color, because once the pencil lines are erased, you will lose the markers that let you know where the shadows start to get lighter or darker. Once the pencil lines are gone, then work on burning the skin to the color it should be. It is much easier to break things down into smaller parts as you work on them. For example, concentrate on the area to the left of the eye. This area starts the side of the nose. Look at how shadowed it is. Look closer and decide if the shadows are uniform in color. If not, where is the darkest spot in the area? Where is the lightest spot? As you are burning in the area, these are the things that you need to pay attention to and replicate in your burn. In addition to asking yourself questions about the light and dark areas, I also find it very helpful to be constantly comparing your work. Let me explain constantly comparing. You are burning in a small area, and during that time, you should be comparing the darkness level of your burn with the reference photo. Keep burning in that small area until you think the darkness level matches that, or is very close to, the reference photo. Then, move on to the next small area that is adjacent to where you were burning. Repeat the process, but this time, also compare it to the first area. Is the second area lighter or darker than the first? How much lighter or darker? As you make these observations, replicate what you see on your artwork. When you start working on a third small adjacent area, you need to compare it with the first two. The entire process of realistically replicating photos is a matter of careful observation to determine how dark to burn in areas and then comparing that with your artwork to make sure you are burning the area to match your observations. As I am working on the eye, I am not thinking about the iris, the eyelids, or any other part of the eye. Instead, I am focused 
just on the area I am currently burning in. I am constantly comparing the darkness of my burn with the reference photo and deciding if I need to keep reburning to darken it up more. I also compare the area I'm burning in with the adjacent areas to decide which areas are the darkest and lightest. Basically, I am constantly comparing my burn progress with the reference photo to make sure I am accurately burning in the shadows that give an object shape. Start with the dark areas on the nostril openings. They are the darkest area on the nose, so burn them to a brown color. Then burn the small area next to the dark opening, but burn that several shades lighter. Afterwards, burn in the adjacent area between the dashed lines. Our first goal with the nose is just like the eyes. We want to erase the pencil lines as soon as they are no longer needed. The slight difference right now is that I am burning in the entire area between the dashed lines. Before you burn in each small area, consult with the reference photo to get an idea of how dark to burn the area. While the area doesn't need to be at its final darkness level, it should be in the general ballpark or semi-close. One thing I think a lot of people want to do, myself included, is to make both halves of the face identical. Resist that urge. Look critically at the shadows on the reference photo. The shadows on the left nostril are lighter in color than the right. The light is not striking both sides of the face the same way. Trust your traced lines. Burn in each small area between the dashed lines around the nose. Don't try to make the two halves of the nose identical. Now that the pencil marks are gone, reburn over the nose to adjust darkness levels, create gradient shading between small areas, and burn in any unburned spots on the skin. At this point, it is extremely important to consult with the reference photo often. Search for the lightest spot on the nose. Most often, it is the tip or the end of the nose, and make sure your artwork has that same light spot. To create the illusion that an object is raised up from the surface of a flat piece of paper or a board requires a combination of highlights, shadows, and gradient shading between them. It is important to place those items correctly on the nose, and that requires careful analysis of the reference photo. Try to stay in the state of comparison. Look at the area you are burning in and compare that with the reference photo. Decide if it needs to be darker. Compare the spot you are burning with adjacent areas. Compare those adjacent areas with the reference photo. Are all of the areas the same color? Which one should be the darkest? Which one is the lightest? How different are they in color? One question I get asked a lot is, why doesn't my artwork look like yours? And the answer is almost always shadows. I spend a lot of time working on the many shadows objects have to give them shape. A lot of times the shadows are so subtle that they don't really seem like shadows. An example of that is the bridge of the baby's nose. Look at the left side of it. There isn't a huge color difference, but the bridge of the nose is slightly lighter than the side of it. 
that subtle shadow is helping to give the nose shape, making it look three-dimensional. If you want to create realistic portraits, then you need to see and replicate all of the shadows from the obvious dark ones to the lighter subtle ones. With the basic areas blocked in, now it is a matter of reburning, fine-tuning, creating gradient shading along the transition lines, and adding color to any unburned areas on the skin. Generally speaking, when I'm adding color to the unburned areas is also where I'm adding more gradient shading to smooth the transition between the small areas. Now I mentioned before that you need highlights, shadows, and gradient shading to give an object shape. So let's examine the nose to see what it would take to make it look 3D or elevated from the surface of the paper. The nose has a highlight on the tip of it. That highlight needs to be the lightest area. The highlight is not a small circular spot. Instead, it is an irregular shape that follows the contours of the nose. So this area should get the least amount of color or burning over. The cheeks next to the nostrils are pretty dark compared to the highlight, but they are not anywhere close to the darkness level of the nostril opening. Plus, the right cheek is several shades darker than the left one. The end of the nose around the nostrils is in shadows. Some of those shadows come close to the darkness level on the left cheek. The upper lip is in shadows too, but it is lighter in color than the end of the nose. Lastly, the bridge of the nose or the area above the highlight is several shades darker than the highlight, but that area is lighter in color than the end of the nose. All of these observations are things that need to be replicated on the artwork to give the nose a 3D appearance. As I work, I am using uniform strokes and circular motion on the skin. I did use some pull-away strokes around the iris of the eye. Speaking of the eye, let's get the right iris finished up. I did find it very helpful to use a writer pen tip to burn around the mini reflections on the eye. Hopefully, you have noticed a mistake I have made. If not, I will give you a hint. Compare the color of the irises between the eyes. I burned the right eye much darker than the left. Yes, the right is more shadowed, but the color difference is not right between the two, so I will have to fix that. It does bring up an important thing, though, and that is to make sure you maintain balance of color. Both halves of the face should look like they belong together, so the color difference should not be too extreme. With the baby's face, the light is striking on the left side, so the right side has more shadows and the shadows are a touch darker. But those shadows should only be a few shades darker than the left side. As you do your own portrait work, these are the types of observations you must train yourself to see. The more you do this, the easier it will become. About the paper. It wasn't bad to burn on. In fact, I thought it was better than anything I have tried so far. I felt that uniform strokes worked better than circular motion for producing smooth, unblotchy burn results. Also, the paper tended to get blotchy looking if I burned too long in one area. I don't know if the heat was affecting the surface structure of the paper or what was going on. But overall, I thought this paper was fine. The artwork, on the other hand, has lots of room for improvement, but for my first portrait on paper, I will call it a success. The very last thing we need to do is sign off on the artwork. I always sign my work with a graphite pencil. Then I use a writer pen tip 
and burn over the pencil marks. Afterwards, rub over the signature with a pencil eraser to remove any graphite, and you're all done. That's it for this tutorial. I hope I provided you with clear, easy to follow along instructions that will help you with your own artwork. The next installment in the portrait series will feature the entire face of a different baby. Plus, I will be testing out a different brand of paper. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have a written tutorial and the reference photo for this artwork. I'm not doing patterns because the whole thing is you need to learn how to do that if you're going to do your own portrait work. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week. Music